Salazar and I'm going to do a really quick video about my mixed media inks and my mixed media embossing powders. I now have 16 colors of mixed media inks and I'm going to show you a few of my favorite things to do with them. Before I get started, I wanted to share a little bit about the inks and what makes them unique. The first is the actual container that it's in. It's actually very squishy. It's very comfortable and um, you can stack them. You can see there's a little bit of a lip here so you can stack the lids on top of each other. The ink itself is very, very pigmented and very juicy. So it's very blendy and um, works great for stamping and embossing and all kinds of really fun stuff. So I'm gonna show you a couple of my favorite techniques and most of them combine water or smooch spritz with the ink itself. And um, the reason why that works really well is because these are also water-based. So um, let me show you some of my favorite stuff. So this is one of the techniques that I like to teach and it is creating a faux vintage burnt edge. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is um, have something with a little bit of a, um, like a coat on it. Uh, Manila tag works really great for this. I have torn the edges in a couple spots and then used my Distress It All on the rest of it because you do wanna have a tattered edge. We're gonna start by spritzing it with water. And this is just regular water. And now I'm going to take my blender and I'm going to take my Honey Mixed Media inks and I'm going to create a wash right over the top of the tag and it blends right in with the water. Then I want to make sure that I have the edges done as well. Okay, and then anywhere where I've touched, I want to just kind of blend that together. Next, I'm going to use the Truffle Mixed Media inks and a blender. When you have water on your tag, you don't really want to um, be touching the pad directly to it too much because it will water down the ink on your pad. So you can see that I'm going from the front and kind of wrapping around the edges. Okay, now I am going to touch the pad just to the very, very edge. And because there's so much color in this and it's water-based, it's going to make this technique really um, different from using other inks. Now I'm using my black. We weren't very creative on the name for that, but it is the Black Mixed Media Inks. And I'm also going to touch that to the edges directly from the pad. There's not a whole lot of water left. It has pretty much soaked in. So now what we're going to do is use the water again, and we're going to spritz the tag. And you should see the ink from the edges start to bleed in toward the middle because it is that water-based ink. And we'll hit this with the heat gun. So now you can see in certain areas where the ink has just blended because of that water. It helped it to wick towards the center. And that's how you do my vintage faux burnt technique. Now I'm going to show you another technique mixing the mixed media inks with water. I have a manila tag here that I have distressed the edges with my distress it all. So I'm going to really mist this down. You can see there's quite a bit of water on here. And I'm going to take my blender and just run it over the tag. And you can see the colors blending towards the middle because like I said it is water-based and there's a ton of pigment in this so you can do a wash over the whole thing and because I have distressed the edge and now this is slightly wet I can go over the edges with the blender 
and it really darkens up the edges. And this is just a color wash using the mixed media inks. And if you want it to drip even more, you can add a little bit more water to it to get a few more drips. So you can see as you dry it with the heat gun, the colors do get lighter and they do blend, but the, there's still a lot of color towards the edges and having that water gives you that same um, effect on the edges where the color's wicking towards the middle like we saw on the last technique. So this is what the tag looks like once it is dried. And again, because there's so much pigment and it's water-based, there's a lot of really fun and artistic techniques that you can do with this ink. Now I'm going to show you just some regular ink blending on the edges using my new patina color. This is one of the eight new colors. You can see how much color is in this ink just by what I've got on here so far. And the colors are very vibrant. And you can see how wet they are. So now after I get enough color on the outside edge, you can do this with your blender if you'd like, but I like using my fingers and I'm just going to blend towards the middle because like I said, they're very, very blendy and you can see the edges softening up as you do this. And you can add more color if you would like the edges so that it will blend more and you can also add some water if you wanted this to blend even a little more so you can see even after we blended it there's still color there's still enough color towards the edges to get it to blend even a little bit more so now we'll just heat that with a heat gun. So after drying it with the heat gun, you can see what the water did to the edges because the spritzed water hit the ink and it blended. And so this is what the tag looks like after it's done. Now I'm going to show you what the inks um, do when you're going to use them for stamping. This is my new mossy color, one of the new colors that was just released. And I'm just going to ink up the stamp. And this is my viney stamp from Argon Wild. See, look at how beautiful that image is. Now, because there's still a lot of color left here, I'm going to go ahead and stamp a couple more times. There's lots of ink still on the stamp. Now to show you how um, wet these can be and some of the fun stuff that you can do with these inks, I'm going to use some clear embossing powder from Clear Snap. Tap that off and you'll be able to tell once we heat this how the ink was able to capture, even up here where there's not a lot of color, there's still enough moisture from the ink that that will be embossed up here. So let's hit this with the heat gun. So you can see how vibrant those colors are even more so after they've been embossed. And look at how clear that image is up in the corner. Even though there wasn't a lot of color, it's still very clear. I'm going to use the image that we stamped and embossed as a little bit of a resist. 
So I am going to spritz with water again. And I am using my Seabreeze Smooch Spritz. I love what that does when it hits the water. And my River Mossy Smooch Spritz as well. And then we'll hit that with some more water. And then you can see the resist taking place where the tag has been embossed. Now after I get it part way dry, I'm going to go back with a baby wipe and I'm going to just wipe off the embossed areas just a little bit so that that will show up even more so. And once you're finished drying, this is what the tag will look like. Now if you're going to use the inks for stamping and you want very crisp images, the best way to set the ink is going to be with the clear embossing powder. Um, if you want to do some background stamps though, um, I've used my bubble wrap here. You can stamp it, blend it with your finger, and then maybe even spritz it with some water and that will set it into the paper. And this is just a background stamp with the embossing powder which again is the best way to set the stamp. But you do get very crisp images using my inks and this is my chandelier stamp using the wisteria inks. So you can get very crisp images and if you want to keep your images very crisp, you can try heat setting it, but um, my favorite is to use the clear embossing powders. And you can see how clean that image is. So here's the tags that I made and hopefully you enjoyed learning some fun techniques that you can also do using my mixed media inks. I have my vintage faux burnt edge technique, my color wash, regular blending and then added a little bit of water to it, embossing and um, some resist techniques and then just straight stamping. Hopefully you can use some of these techniques and now I'm going to show you some fun stuff that you can do with my embossing powders. I do have, um, I have eight embossing powders that mix my, uh, that match them, stuff like that. material that you're going to be stamping or inking or by um, by using blah, blah, blah. hopefully you can use some of these texts blah, 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 blah.